I'm jumping backwards. I'm jumping backwards. I'm jumping backwards. I'm jumping backwards. Hello everyone, I'm Lost and welcome to another episode of Weapon Spotlight and today we are looking at the baby rattle, the Lovecraftian flail, the alien anal beads. <laughs> Look, I probably shouldn't say that out loud because YouTube will demonetize me. But you know what? I'm committed now, so let's just go for it. This weapon has one of the coolest weapon arts in the game. You go like, Hwa! And you kind of float towards the enemies while bright lights explode all the way around you. And it has some really solid damage potential. In fact, I'm gonna put in a clip and show you just how good it can really be. There you go, you saw the clip. I <laughs> I'm just recording all of this in one go. <laughs> Look, there is a problem with the weapon art though, and that is it's really slow, so hitting somebody with this, I feel, is a little bit more like luck. It's a little bit more like playing the lottery. And unfortunately, the bad stuff doesn't end there, because if we are to take a look at the moveset of this weapon, you'll see it's a flail moveset. Not surprisingly, because it's a flail. And the flail moveset is not the slowest, but it is short and the damage is not great. If we take a look at the damage, we do 585. And uh, if we use the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will then move that up to 684. You know what? That's not too bad, but still, for a weapon like this, that's not great. Generally, there is a solution to that, and that is to dual wield whatever weapon is doing really bad on one hand, and you can do so. The problem is the dual wielding moveset is also really bad. It is so slow, and why is he just so adamant at hitting the ground all the time? I don't know, man. It's just something about this weapon, this whole weapon class, really, that bugs the hell out of me. So, I am not expecting to have a very good time playing with this weapon, but it is what it is. So let's just get onto the invasions, shall we? And here we go, straight to the winter wonderland of the consecrated snowfields. Now immediately we begin with two guys who both dragon rot breath me. That's not great. I have no cover here, so I have to be smart about this. Now, luckily for me, this man decides to just run straight at me. And you know what? He gets what he deserves. I smack him with the weapon art and the man immediately dies. This could have been such a bad situation. Luckily, the overconfidence of the phantom really screwed the host over. Now, of course, I gotta back up, gotta use the cure to heal myself of the space aids. And let's get straight back into it. Unlucky for me, though, a hunter just arrived. So I should be quick about this. I need to do as much damage in as short a time as I possibly can. I try to use the weapon art, but it is too slow. So he gets in a good hit. And there's the blue. I need to be super quick. Get in a good hit. Come on, get in a few more. I try to use a weapon art, maybe. Yeah, there we go. And bang! We get him so close. Come on, you can do this. Kill him! Murder him past me! Ah, oh, but the blue... I'm not gonna give the blue a compliment, but at the very least, he's doing his job. You know, we can't compliment blue people. They are terrible. We get an actual hit there, which was very surprising to me. The blue, though, is trying to get his revenge by murdering me. He's actually using a very cool uh, Ash of War. I love that Ash of War. But you know what? I don't have a lot of blue juice left, and I really ought to be focusing on the host. He's not... He, I, I hate hosts like this who are constantly spamming the rot breath, but I think he's now actually out of juice, which is why he's uh, he's doing this. And look at me, I get in a really solid hit with the Ash of War and they both go down. That is one hell of an ending to a difficult invasion. Generally though, this is more pure luck. I will give you guys some behind the scenes facts here. I actually lost a hell of a lot of invasions using this weapon. 
Oh, look at the man. He's up there. I'm looking around for more people, but they're down here. Most of the times I lost, though, it was mainly due to things like three people just mur uh, murking me, uh, ganking me within seconds. So, not super entertaining. Anyways, uh, I, I was like, okay, what should we do here? I decide to go in here with both of my flails because the jump attack on the flail is perhaps the quickest weapon and we hit with both of them so we do some damage. I try to buff up but unfortunately I get dragged by the Radon swords but I see here that the, uh, the, the guy that has the censored name, I completely forgot who was the host here. Oh, well, the yellow dice, the weapon art can be very good again if we if we're lucky if we don't get hit now i tried to go for him again because i could see he has very little health and two jump attacks would be enough to kill him but speaking of jump attacks a few jump attacks could kill me as well so i decide to uh seek shelter and we jump backwards then we go for a weapon art and bang the man is dead now this guy has some problems in fact he has a condition that I would like to call completely dead. Another really good invasion. Those were perhaps the best invasions I got with these weapons. Because you had a crew of people who simply didn't understand the amount of damage that I could do. And therefore, therefore didn't respect it. Moving on, we are going to take on three guys who, uh, well, they are right there. It doesn't seem like they have a lot of health. I want to take advantage of that. So I try for a weapon art immediately. It doesn't end well. This was one of the invasions where I only used one of the flails. Probably not the smartest thing. But as you could see, we almost had two of them there. Almost. But they were smart enough to get out of the, uh, the weapon art. And now I'm in a bad spot because they are surrounding me. I try to get some healing out, but just one guy comes in and I just get stun locked. It is what it is. I can't really do much in the way of hit and run tactics and they are not afraid of the weapon. So that will happen. Moving on to the next invasion. This is going to be an excellent showcase of one of the limitations of the weapon. If you have been invading in the Halig Tree, you know exactly what kind of person awaits you at the top of this tower. Generally, they use Mogwin Spear and they wait at the ladder and they try to bleed you. We have a different tactic from this guy. He's using the fingerprint shield and does nothing but pokes. You could say it's a little cheap. I would tend to agree, but it is what it is. So my strategy here is trying to surround him with my weapon art so that I could perhaps damage him from behind. But as you can see, it doesn't seem to connect. I don't know if the weapon art was just a little off or if the shield kind of absorbs it, but I'm having no luck. And also you can see he's got a lot of damage here, but I didn't survive. I am dead and... I don't know what to do in that situation, except for change weapons, maybe. Another guy with a really interesting build here, look at this. This is double St. Trina's sword, right? And you will see how strong this is. He does one jump attack, I roll out of it, but he sleeps me. And then he hits me again with a double attack. I manage to roll out of the second one, but he hits me there as well. And I get, I get, an, I get, I get slipped so quickly, man. So quickly, I don't know what to do there. If I had the better weapon, a quicker weapon, a weapon with more reach, we could have had a conversation about what to do, but I don't really know. Hey. So, uh, I guess we're back to just a regular couple of guys, and this feels <laughs> good to be back to the regular people, honestly. We managed to get a uh, shield break, but unfortunately, he shoves that entire thing up my ass several times and I'm so close to killing him here but I didn't get it if I had one more second I need to heal or I will die so we jump over here I heal up and they're not coming for me that was a mistake for their on their side I tried to kind of hit him from the other side of the wall maybe try to get some there I didn't get anything there but you know I'm actually doing enough damage here with the uh, Ash War and we're in a very enclosed space so that is actually good for me I need to heal up I do not want to feel the frost here 
because that's gonna be damage and as you can see damage it is and another weakness I would be knocked senseless if I tried my ash of war against that guy's uh, rock sling I wish to ash of war if it it should have come out quicker it really should but if nothing else maybe give it more hyper armor but we do manage to get a good hit there and he rolls immediately and you shouldn't do that because I get him with the explosion and then the other phantom he bows down I give him the shaking of respect that was a great match GG sir and I I have to say I love this community there are way more decent people here than toxic assholes I know the community has a little bit of a, uh, a reputation of being toxic but I don't think that is deserved quite frankly now to another invasion and bang look at that immediate death I got really lucky with a lot of these invasions a lot of people probably don't expect me to be using the Bowser Stars or they don't actually know how to counter the weapon art. It's not good if you have an experienced opponent, but against an opponent like that, well, it's going to work out real fine. And that's all for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give this weapon a score, a review score, and I'm gonna give it... I know it seemed good in my videos, but honestly, I had a lot of losses and I didn't record all of them because they were like, I were in the fight for like three seconds, got ganked and yeah, it wasn't great. I lost a lot <laughs> using this weapon. So I'm going to give it a four out of 10. The weapon art makes it a little better, but Jesus Christ, man, it was painful to use. Oh, yeah, remember to subscribe <laughs> or I'll shank you. Kisses.